The Sixers are in playoff mode with three games left in the season. You are locked on 76ers, your daily Philadelphia 76ers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On 76ers your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. LinkedIn jobs help you find qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash locked on NBA. That's LinkedIn.com slash locked on NBA to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. What's up, Mitch? How you doing? I'm doing excellent, Keith, man. How you doing, bro? You doing better? I know you came down a little bug on that road trip. Yeah, I came. Woke up, man. What was it? I woke up, uh, wow, what was it, Saturday morning? Yeah, I woke up Saturday morning. I said, like, ooh, my throat. Like, I got a little throat or something. You know, I got a sore throat. And then um, it, it kind of seemed it got worse um, yeah. as the days went along. But um, back home, got a game tonight. And for y'all don't know, I'm, I'm Keith Pompey. It's my right-hand man, John Mitchell. <laughs> We are the co-hosts of Locked On 76ers. And like I said in the uh, intro, it's a lot of uh, the Sixers are in playoff mode, John. Yeah. That's all they talk about. Now, for y'all who don't know, right now the Sixers are in, in seventh place with three games remaining. They are a game behind the Indiana Pacers. And now if the Sixers get the sixth seed, they don't have to go in the play-in tournament they would automatically be the sixth seed and play the third seed in the first round of playoffs. Now, in order for the Sixers to get that seed, because they lost the tiebreaker, they have to win two games, and Indiana would have to lose two games in order for the Sixers to get that sixth seed. But right now, they're in the driver's seat to host the seven eight playing game with the winner taking the seven seed in the playoff against the uh Miami Heat. So meaning take it make clarify this. They are the seventh seed. The Heat are the eighth seed. So the Sixers, if 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 everything stays the same, the Sixers will host the Miami Heat in the playing game with the winner of that game um getting the seventh seed in the playoffs and possibly playing the Milwaukee Bucks. So that's what it looks like right about now. But yeah, them talking about being in playoff mode, a good thing, even though they got on paper some teams you can sleep on and, and that could bite you. But for them to say they're in playoff mode is a good thing. Yeah, it absolutely is, man. You know, they um, you know, they're they're on this five game winning streak, um, the longest streak that they had since ironically, you know, Joel. Uh, they won those six. They won those six games back in January, right before Joel suffered that injury. And right now, you know, it's 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 it's, it's not it's not always how you play at certain points in the season. But what is important is how you go into the playoffs. Um, and you know, they they played a dynamic game uh, in San Antonio. You know, beating San Antonio, um, which is obviously you know a team that's not even thinking playoffs but it, it was a must win for the 76ers and you know they, they pushed them into the second overtime and, and won that game with Tyrese Maxey having a career high and um you know they, they're, they're winning games obviously bringing Joel back is is a huge bonus but now you know you, you've got to go out there and you got to put the hammer down you know you had three games remaining and you know the, the longest win streak of the season was eight games uh earlier you know um at the drop in the first game of the season to Milwaukee, who could be there if, if things hold true, quite possibly could be their playoff if they do lock that seven seed up, um, their playoff opponent, um, which is much more preferable than seeing the Boston Celtics. So, yeah, they're, they're definitely in playoff mode. And, 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 you know, to their credit, they've won these five games. They won one without Joel, and they, and they, look, and they look pretty good. 
you know, granted, it's supposed to be San Antonio if you're planning on making any noise in the playoffs. But, um, yeah, I, I think the 76ers are, you know, they, they got to close, but they, they got to close the season on an eight game winning streak. They got to close the regular season with eight straight wins. That's where they are. Yeah, the, the thing that stood out to me in that game was, I mean, you talked about Tyrese Maxey scoring 52 points. Now, granted, y'all, let people know that was a game where Joel Embiid had the night off, uh, Kyle Lowry had the night off, um, uh, Tobias Harris it wasn't able to return. He missed the, the past three games, and that one included mm-hmm. um, with a, a left knee contusion. So he didn't play. So where you had it is you had, um, you know, Maxie, um, you know, basically being the, the, the star. Yeah. And being Kelly Oubre. Now, Kelly Oubre stepped up as well. But they don't win that game without the contributions to Ricky Council before. Yeah. From, yeah. Kyle, from Ricky Council before and from Nico Batum mm-hmm. and even adding K.J. Martin a little bit, doing a little bit of the, the role playing, the dirty stuff, dirty man stuff. So getting down and dirty, as they say, um, he wasn't being um, he wasn't doing anything like bending the rules. But what I mean by that, he was just nitty and gritty, grabbing rebounds, hustling, doing all that other thing. So to me, when you look at that and you see how they got contributions from those guys mm-hmm. it is a plus is a plus because it gives them confidence. It gives their teammates confidence in them and and, you know, play because I'm telling you, you know, the one person that we all been talking about for a while is Ricky Council the fourth. Like when they were in demand, he was out there balling. Then guys come back and he goes back to the G League. And now you're looking at it and you're saying to yourself, like, you know, he could be someone that can contribute. Now, the problem is on a two way contract, the problem is that you can't play in the playoffs. So the question mark is, they got three games left. Are they going to transfer his contract? They got an open roster spot. Are they going to transfer his contract to from a two way to a um, to a standard deal? Because what he showed us this last game is that you may need him to provide that type of spark coming off the bench. Yeah. And, and so, so Keith, I, I'm 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 assuming because I'm not really, that that will work. That he'll be guaranteed. He'll be fully guaranteed through the year. Is that how that works? This year? Well, his contract, yeah, his contract. But what it is is, if you're on a two way deal, you just can't play in the playoffs. Mm. It's just you know you got to have it's for the standard guy. Now the two way guys tend to work out. Now what happened is when they was in the uh, bubble, they anybody could play right because they right. Like right. that. But um, not. Nah, it's like, yeah, it will be – he'll get a contract through the range of season. What it sounds like to me is – and it could be this. So, Council is a guy who has a huge upside. So, right. typically, what you want to do is that's the type of guy that you want to lock in long term, yeah. right? Yeah. So, if you say to him, okay, we're going to give you a contract through the end of this season, and it's just a one-year deal, and the term and stuff, he played well enough that he ain't he may not come back. Somebody yeah. else going to get him. So so like, but then at the same time, how much money do you want if you're Daryl Moore in them? How much money are you willing to pay him? So yeah. there's a lot of things that's going on right now, you know. And this is so, and this is just me, just yeah, you know, the doing it what um, factoring what could be the holdup. But but um, but yeah, because I'm here to tell you. He's the best two. He was the best guy that they had, but you know, the best one, you know, um, that one, you know, he he they they converted his contract, Jeff. That one, which is good, which is good player. But yeah, he, he the guy is the guy. Yeah, he's the one that's making the impact. Yeah, he's the guy yeah, making yeah. the impacts. I like him, man. I mean, when when he made that when he made that reach around pass in the San Antonio game out to the perimeter for that three, I was like, good lord of my man. You know, it's just he. He does things. He makes winning plays, man. You know, so um, you know, so he's in he's in playoff mode. The Sixers are in playoff mode. I I, I would like to see again, man. Dow Moore's got some things he's got to figure out. You know, from large to small, moving forward. Uh, but Ricky Council has been incremental to um, 
to you know to what they're doing you know so right now let's talk about linkedin when you're hiring for your small business you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role that's why you have to check out linkedin jobs linkedin jobs has the tools to help find to help you find the right professionals linkedin isn't just another job job board linkedin has a vast network of more than a billion professionals which makes it best pl- makes it the best place to hire it gives you access to professionals you can't find anywhere else linkedin jobs does all that while making the process easy and intuitive so post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on MBA. That's locked. That's linkedin.com slash locked on MBA to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Are you watching Fox Sports on ESPN or, or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today. A free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news. Streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Podcast Network, your team every day. Definitely do it today, people. Definitely. Do it. So, you know, the, the good thing. So we looked at the 76ers and, you know, when they went out there and they got Buddy Hill, you know, mm-hmm. everyone talked about how Buddy Hill was coming out here. He was going to be the man. Everything was going to work out the whole nine. What well, had um, as of it now? What I mean is, and also they felt like once Joel came, we would see a big difference, right? And we really haven't. Mm. And Buddy has been kind of struggling. Yeah, you know, I was watching him. I remember when he first came here, and uh, the first, <clears throat> the first day he signed. Excuse me, the first day he was traded, and. So he was traded on a Wednesday. I believe they played on the Thursday, whatever. I was I got in the gym early. The next thing you know, I see Buddy Hill out there shooting the ball. And the ball was just going in left and right. It mm-hmm. was taking all these shots. Well, on uh Saturday, I go to Memphis over to the arena. And uh there's Buddy Hill doing the same thing. And this time he was missing. Not a lot. He was, you know, he was missing. Like the the difference is when you go to these NBA things and you see these guys work out, especially the elite one, elite shooters. Yeah, it's a showtime. They could, go, they could go thirty for thirty, bro. Like it's just yeah. crazy, ridiculous. They don't miss. Yeah, he wasn't shooting that way. Like he would hit one, he would miss two. He would mm-hmm. maybe hit three, then he'll miss two. You know what I mean? It was like real inconsistent. And now you look at it and you say, you're like, yo, what's going on with Buddy? Yeah. He has not lived up to the expectations that we all had for him in the beginning where we were saying Buddy Hill was going to be this guy. I haven't, I mean, I saw it early on, but I haven't seen it since the last couple of games. You know? I haven't yeah. at all. Yeah, no, I agree with you, Keith. I know, um, like, like you said, when he first came on, you know, his first six games, he averaged 19.3 points, 6.2 assists, and he was shooting 50% from the floor, and he was making 46% of his three-pointers. Uh, in the last 22 games, not including the um, San Antonio game, he's averaged 10 points per game, 2.4 assists per game, shooting 39.5% from the field and 34.4% on threes. So... He's falling off, man. He um and, and, and also, you know, I mean, defensively, I'm not, I, I haven't seen much from him. You know, he doesn't doesn't move his feet well on defense. But I do think, um, and, and I was having this conversation with somebody the other day. I, I think that 
when the playoffs come, he, he he's going to be that guy that they're going to be asking to, you know, who will get that single coverage um, around the perimeter to hit that three, you know, to hit that long jumper. Um, I mean, because that's, you know, that's what he's done pretty much for his career. So we'll see if he can do it now. Um, that's what they're going to be asking him to do. That's what's going to be required of him. And I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt and say that he will do it in the playoffs. You know, I think that he, um, you know, I, I don't expect him to be this guy giving you 17, 18 points per game. But I, I think he'll get comfortable playing along Joel um, when it goes to the next level. I, and I have enough confidence to know that Nick Nurse is, is in his ear and tell him, hey, man, I mean, we're going to need that jumper. We're going to need that jumper and some more defense from you, uh, you know, when the postseason arrives. Yeah. I mean, right now, my thing is, if you're not getting that jumper from him, then he might not be valuable to you in the playoffs. I mean, yeah, so, oh, yeah, he's not. Yeah, he's. I mean, if he's not, if he's not doing that, you he's not going to be valuable. You there? Yeah, I am. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's just not. Yeah. He's not. I mean, because you look at it. Let's see. If we look at the last three. Now, the last game wasn't as bad, right? Mm-hmm. The last. He got 40% on three against the Spurs. But, again, I mean, what we're talking about with, with Joel back, with, with MB back, the yep. first game he shot one for two on threes. He was two for six overall from the field, but he was one for two. The second game of MB was back. Buddy Hill was 0 for six from the field, and he was 0 mm. for four on threes. Mm, and then the not third good. game back, that's, yeah, his third and Joel Embiid's third game, Buddy Hill shot one for seven on threes and three for 12 overall. Mm. So what we're saying is, Embiid, you came here because you were going to form, uh, you know, you were going to form a combo with Embiid, a sharp shooting one. But in your three games playing with Joel Embiid, you were shooting 15.4% from three. Wow. You're averaging three in those three games. He's averaging three, um, it's uh, 5.3 points, right? Now, he did make all his foul shots, but you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. it's, it's kind of hard to play him. Yeah. Because it's not like he's a lockdown defender. You right. Know I mean? Right. It's going to be hard to play him if he can't make shots, in my opinion. No, it's, and, and, and the thing about it was, you know, when he first got here, you know, he was like um, he was a bright and shiny new Mercedes Benz sitting on a lot. Now, since that time, his values depreciated significantly. Um, but I, I do believe that um, I, I have a feeling, again, because he's done it for most of his career. Um, you know, he's got to use these, these, these final three regular season games to find his jumper, you know, and, and, and establish it so that his teammates feel confident in him. Because like you said, he's not giving him a whole lot defensively. Um, and, you know, when he first came here, you know, he showed us that he was not only just a three-pointer. You know, we, we know it's in him, you know. We know it's in him. Uh, and, it, and it should be easy to play off of Embiid and Maxi. Um, and, you know, when, when Tobias is back out there, so he's, he's way down on the options list for that team. Uh, but they're going to need his jumper. Because they were just, just I mean, let's face it, they were a mediocre three-point shooting team for most of the season, um, and they're going to need they're going to need his jump shot in the, in, in the postseason. They, they need a jump shot now. They need a, they need his jumper starting the night against Detroit. You know, Detroit is one of those traveling teams that teams get well off of, and they need that Detroit team to show up tonight and get well. <laughs> buddy, you know, Buddy needs to get his. He needs, I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> like it's funny too how that happens. Because there's a lot of times when that stuff happens, and 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 sometimes you want to tell people like, yo, yo, relax a little bit, relax. Like a guy is in the shooting slump, and they play a bum squad, and then all of a sudden he looks looks like the second coming of Michael Jordan, and they're like, he's out of the slump, he's out of the slump. Yeah. And he's like, nah, chill, let's see another. One. And then the next game they play a quality team, and he goes back to struggling. You know? Yeah, so, yeah. Okay. <laughs> But this is a confidence boost game. Could be. It, it, it is. And this one, you know, he he needs it. I mean, I mean, he's a pro. He's been doing it for some time now. 
and I believe he has confidence in this game, but you know, it's, it's it's about how you're playing going into the playoffs. You know, you don't want to go in there like you know, looking like a scrub and not getting it done. I feel, so, you know. I feel you. I feel you big time. I feel you big time. Um, but my question is, right now, for his role, I don't really see anybody else on the team that can fulfill that role. No, I agree. Yeah, they um. I mean, campaign has had some nice stretches where he shot the ball well for him, but you know this. You know, you 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 want this guy to be out there. You know, to be a you know to be that big guard who is the designated shooter, who is who's your marksman. You you know, and they need that right now. You know, I mean, you you need all you need all your ducks in a row right now heading into heading into the playoffs. Mm-hmm. But let's 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 talk let's talk a minute about one of my sponsors game time here you ever you ever had that frustrating experience where you're trying to buy a ticket uh maybe you know for a game and you know you find out that all they have is the seats with obstructions in front of them maybe you want to watch a baseball game and you know you're sitting behind a point you're in a, in a poorly constructed stadium that has bad seats well that's what game time is here for you know, game time is here to offer you opportunities to get tickets for Major League Baseball games, NBA playoffs for good seats. You know, you can get, um, you know, you can get flash deals. You can save even more with an exclusive in, with exclusive in-app deals on select seats ahead of the game or the event. You can save up to sixty percent off buying last minute for sports, concerts, comedy, theater. All kinds of things. So you know, if if you, I know Keith, you don't have that problem because you you know you're sitting front and center watching Philadelphia's favorite basketball team. But for people who want to get those tickets in the last minute, and don't want to play an arm and a leg, check out Game Time. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use Locked On NBA for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code locked on NBA for twenty dollars off. Download the game time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices, and they're guaranteed. You know, the thing about that, uh the thing about like at game time now we gotta see is crazy is is the Anthony Melton going to be a game time yeah. decision? Like, yeah. you know, the Anthony Melton for y'all who don't know, the Anthony Melton has only played in five games due to a back injury. Mm-hmm. So, five games meaning since December the thirtieth. Like he returned, he took a time off. He returned for two, then he took some time off, and then he returned for three. And 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 then he hasn't played yet. It's been one of those type situations. So the biggest mysteries on the team has always been when is he going to come back? Mm-hmm. When is Robert Covenant going to come back? Well, Cub is still listed as out. Robert Covenant has not played since December the thirtieth against the Chicago Bulls, right? His hometown Bulls in Chicago. But Melton is listed as questionable as of this morning so i don't know what that means i don't know if he's gonna play i mean because i i be, the reason why i say i don't know what that means y'all is because teams have had a way of uh getting over on these injury reports like yeah. back in the day injury meant, questionable meant that the dude it was a quite it was up in the air 50 50 chance that he could play but then there's certain times when guys are listed as questionable and you know they're going to play, right? right? You know they're not going to play. It's like, it's kind of like, yeah, it's kind of like, let's keep the other team guessing. So mm-hmm. so that's where you are. So, again, you know, he would be a good help. I think the defense and that he provides could help them. But the only thing is, the question mark is, same concerns we have for Joel and B. The guy is going to be rusty. Rusty, very rusty. It's going to take for him to get back in shape. Yeah, you know, this and that, and and then a back problem thing for Melton is something that like you can't believe me. I got a bad back. I have a bad back. Y'all. I'm going to tell you how it goes. So I've had a bad back for years, 
I can go a couple years feeling great and then wake up one morning or move slightly to the left or to the right and I feel like somebody just like just hit me with a hit me with a a a, a brick or something like that in the back that's how that's how it is you go into Fred Sanford mode yeah so it's tough playing that way so or well, you know what I mean and and, and you never know when it when the pain's going to come mm-hmm. so so that's the concern but the big thing is Covington yeah you know, I asked him when he was coming back he like he ain't know you know you could tell the way that he responded that this is a question that he's been getting bombarded with lately yeah. by a lot of people so um you know I, I just feel like I wouldn't be surprised if I mean I expect I, I wouldn't be surprised if Covington didn't return I just would you know at, at least not not this week you know what I mean at least not yeah. this week. yeah and you and, and you know what's worrisome about that Keith is that you know the, the, what, what joins those two together is they're they're the best perimeter defenders mm-hmm. you know and 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 they are going to need you know those guys in the playoffs and it's and, and again you know we we did see the anthony made a little you know he made a comeback and then that back and, and like you said the back you know I, i've had the l5 s1 surgery on my back and i know exactly what you're talking about and i will tell you brother bending over picking those bags up at the airport doesn't help one bit um but you know, you, with, with a back, you just don't know. They, they've got, you know, their, their two best perimeter defenders have two of the most questionable injuries, um, where you, you just don't know how it's going to react—a knee injury and a back injury. You know, the only thing missing from that really is like, you know, in the hamstring. Those are those injuries that when they pop up, you don't know how the body's going to react. You know, it's a, it's, it's do you play? Do you rest? Um, and you know, and, and I do like the way. You know, from a rotational standpoint, you know, and that's been an issue with the Sixers all season long because, you know, Nick Nurse has never had a fully healthy squad. I mean, we, their health has been between the trades that they made, bringing in new players, and not knowing the health, uh, being able to depend on guys being there when you need them. And let's be quite honest, when we you know, when, they, when they brought Cub in here, it's like, hey man, that's 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 a guy who's going to help. You know, you're going to need him for the Jason Tatums of the world to put him on those long goodbyes and stuff like that. They haven't been able to do that. So uh, those are big issues, man. And, and the only three games to get it right, you ideally you want to see those guys get on the floor before the playoffs begin, you know. Um, but, that, yeah, Russ is going to be a major problem. I mean, like you said, we haven't seen Covington since, we, you know, we, we the calendar switched from 2023 to 2024. If all intents and purposes, it's been the same thing with DeAnthony Melton, you know. Yeah, so, yeah, that's the same. Yeah, you there? so we'll see. Yeah, I'm, I'm here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I mean, that, that's the problem. I mean, you know, that, that that's the thing. We got to see how that works out. We do, Big but problem. tonight, you know, tonight, I mean, they should win tonight. Uh, I think, you know, when they play uh, on Friday against Orlando, that's going to be that tough test, yeah. Because Orlando still has something to play for, if, if, you know, locking in and see. Right now they're the third seed, so they still have something right. to play for. Um, um. So, and then I think Brooklyn they'll beat them. So I, I think the Sixers are guaranteed to go two and one, but it would be nice for them to go three and zero. Oh. If, if you know, they're that team, if they're that team, and Joel should be able to play in all of them. Yeah. Think I mean, you know, no, nah, like look, he he had off on Sunday. Today they play today on on Tuesday, and then they don't play again on Friday. Yeah, and then, then they got the game on Sunday. So everything should work out for him. Everything should work out for him. I got. So, I had to admit, I was disappointed he didn't play in San Antonio. I knew he probably was. That was a back to back, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I didn't want to see him and Wemby go at it again, but yeah, yeah, yeah you know, yeah, I don't know it would have been nice, but that would have been that would have been four games in in uh, six days. Play, so, playing, him, playing him in that situation would have been utterly stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they they, they shut it down. But look, y'all, we want to thank y'all for listening, and we want to thank y'all for coming to Locked On Seventy Sixes. 
we want y'all to know that um, this podcast is free and available. You can get it wherever you get your podcast at. Um, that and YouTube, right? We're part of the Locked On Network, your team every day. And Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channel app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24 7, covering top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On Plus, our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on a free Fire TV channel app. Do it today, people. Definitely do it today. And we would like to say peace to y'all. We want y'all. I'm like, where am I hand at? We want <laughs> y'all to have, you know, we want y'all to have a great uh, day, great week, everything. Do go, go ahead, get well, Keith, man. I'm get some lozenges, get some lozenges, bro. I know. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. <laughs> Peace. Peace out, y'all.